Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Hi again, everyone. My name is Sarah Moskell, she, her, hers, and I'm the health education coordinator for student wellness, which is um, a part of counseling and consultation services. Uh, these past couple Mondays, we've been hosting a coping through COVID-19 self-care webinar series, and this is the third in our series. And today we're going to be talking about grief and disappointment, because let's be honest, COVID-19 has created a lot of disappointment and loss and grief and these are tough feelings to experience and to talk about and to manage. And they also impact a variety of areas in our life. So we're going to talk about how can we better manage some of these feelings and how can we maybe help others. Before I get started, I will also be joined today by one of my wonderful graduate assistants, Julie Rubal, she, her, hers, and she'll be joining us about halfway through the presentation. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat function. And without further ado, let's get started. When I talk to others about grief and disappointment, I often like to use this quote to really explain the experience of grief. And the quote states, grief is like the ocean. It comes on waves ebbing and flowing. Sometimes the water's calm and sometimes it's overwhelming. All we could do is learn to swim. Grief can be very overwhelming and it certainly comes in waves. And I'm hoping that through this presentation today, you might learn a little bit more how to swim through the ocean of grief that you may be experiencing. And so it's very common right now to be experiencing grief due to COVID-19. We've all been impacted by the pandemic, whether it's been the loss of daily routines, the loss of a quote normal college experience, loss of a job, or even loss of a loved one due to COVID-19. So what exactly is grief? How do we define it? Well, grief can be defined as your internal experience to a loss. So your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions, how are you experiencing them? Disappointment on the other hand, are feelings of sadness that result from the loss. So disappointment is a feeling and grief is the experience of it. Also important to note that grief has no time limit. So if someone says, oh, you know, you're grieving this, it'll take you three months or two weeks or whatnot, Maybe, maybe that could be the case for that person, but ultimately grief has no time limit. It can last a couple months, it can last a year, and it can also last a lifetime. And everybody experiences grief, so know that you are not alone in your feelings that you may be experiencing. And even children as young as three can start to experience grief. So there's no age limit, there's no experience limit. It's a part of the human experience. Also something important to know that when it comes to grief, you may not even know that somebody is grieving. Again, emphasizing that grief is an eternal experience. So be patient. Be kind with others. So what's defined as a loss since grief is when you experience a loss? The common thought is that loss is more uh, related to death or losing a loved one. And that is very true. But loss can also be more than that. So we've listed some examples on the screen 
which these may be some of the losses that you've experienced as a result of COVID-19. So big events could have been canceled, graduation, birthday parties, birthdays, actual birth of a child, funerals even, changes in expectations. So you may have been expecting that your college experience was going to be full of being around people, maybe going to parties, joining all these clubs, but now it's mostly just you in front of a screen. There's also the loss of normalcy and routine. Uh, COVID-19 sure has turned our routines upside down. Every time I leave my apartment, wash my hands. Did I grab my mask? Do I have hand sanitizer? There's just so many other things that are different now, and that's hard to wrap your mind around. There's economic loss, so if you've lost a job or money in general, or maybe there are certain support services, that may have been limited to you or now there's not as much of it loss of connection which could be not seeing your friends as often in person i don't know if anybody has experienced this yet but i remember i didn't see someone physically in person for like over a month and it was the weirdest thing ever um, since we're so used to seeing each other in a screen there's loss of a relationship, which could be a breakup. It could be losing somebody. Could also be just the relationship looks different now because everything's mostly virtual. Loss of security and stability because the pandemic makes us feel unsafe. And I put emerging adulthood on here, and that's essentially when you become more of an adult, um, you do lose sometimes what it's like to be a teenager or um, whichever identity you may have had when you were younger. There's a loss accompanied to that. Also important to note that you can experience multiple losses at once. Just looking at this list of examples, I'm, I'm nodding my head because I'm like, yep, I've been experiencing that one and that one. It's a lot to handle. And with multiple losses, that will prolong your grief experience and actually hinder the healing process. But I do want you to know that there are supports and there are things that you could do to help yourself on your healing journey. There's also something called anticipatory grief. And I wanted to point this one, this type of grief out because a lot of people are experiencing it right now due to COVID-19. So what is anticipatory grief? This is the feeling experienced when the future is uncertain. So some examples could be maybe yourself or your loved one has had a medical diagnosis like cancer. That can lead to a lot of uncertainty in the future. Potentially the thought of losing a parent, a loved one, or pet, just thinking about that creates a lot of sadness and a lot of anxiety. So there's a lot of uncertainty about those things and about the future. Now, COVID-19 has certainly generated a lot of uncertainty about the future. I can't still even wrap my mind around the fact that I've been working from home since about March. It's, it makes me wonder, how much longer will I be working from home? How long is this going to last? Is this going to last forever? And that's not true. These thoughts are just the result of anticipatory grief, the anxiety about this uncertainty of the future. And one of the reasons COVID-19 has generated this uncertainty is because when you can't necessarily see a virus and when you can't physically see something, it creates a lot more uncertainty and unknown and that also generates this loss of safety and stability i can't see it where is it what's going to happen so anticipatory grief again is that feeling that anxiety you feel when you think about the uncertainty of the future so what are some common misperceptions excuse me what are some common misconceptions about grief 
Uh, one of the most common questions asked is, are there stages of grief? Well, let's take a look. So you may have seen or heard of the stages of grief before. And that's this diagram you see on the screen here. And it essentially states that there are five stages of grief in that there are five experiences or stages or things that you will experience in order to heal from a grieving experience. The first is denial. Oh, I didn't, this didn't happen, you know, like, oh no, did this really happen? Oh, have I really been working from home since March? Denial. Then there's anger. So you're frustrated about the experience. Oh, you're making me stay home and you're taking away my activities, my school activities, my student organizations. This isn't fair. The third step would be bargaining. You're kind of trying to come to a sense of acceptance with it, but still feeling some of that grief. So, okay, if I um, physically distance for about two weeks, then everything will be better, right? If you recall back in the spring, oh yeah, this will go away like in about a month, maybe two months, bargaining. Third would be sadness. Just overwhelming amount of sadness and depressed thoughts and feelings. I don't, I don't know when this is going to end. Is it ever, will it ever really? And lastly is acceptance. Acceptance of everything that has been occurring, all the losses that have occurred. This is happening right now. COVID-19 is happening right now. And I have to figure out how to move forward with my goals school, job, and so forth. And these are all symptoms of grief as well. Now, the thing is, if you recall that my first question was, are there stages? Well, Sarah, you just, you just explained all the stages. They're right there. Well, actually, this diagram is incorrect and there aren't necessarily stages. It's not linear. Grief does not occur in a specific order. So it doesn't go denial, anger, bargaining, sadness, acceptance. That's not how grief works. If anything, you'll see I added all these arrows on the screen. So you could go from anger to maybe acceptance and then back to bargaining and then denial and then sadness. And it, it just, it continues. So know that the answer is no, there aren't stages. It's not a linear process. It doesn't go one after another. Grief moves in and out. Recall the quote from the beginning of this presentation. Grief ebbs and flows like waves. Also, there aren't stages of grief because everybody is different. Everyone will have their own individual response to grief. Everybody is different. No one should tell you how you should grieve. You know yourself best. You do what's best for yourself in a healthy manner. Next, next common misconception is being positive is the best thing you could say to somebody who is grieving. That's not the case. So here are some things that if you know someone is experiencing a loss, any of the losses that we've gone over, these are things that you should avoid saying to that individual. At least blank, at least a positive thing. So, well, I know COVID's happening, but at least you could still go to college. At least you don't have COVID-19. At least you still have a job. Just saying these out loud, honestly, I do, just like stings. This is more of a, a sympathy statement rather than an empathy. It's not being there with me. It's forcing me to think about something else when right now going to college is hard. So why would I think it's a positive thing right now? Be strong. Okay, well, consider this. Show you saying being strong is showing the person that 
you can't be weak. You can't be weak. You have to be strong. When in actuality, they're actually already strong. And saying be strong invalidates their strength. It equates that grieving is in fact weak. And it's not. It's human and that's strong. There is a reason for everything. Is there? Is there really a reason for everything? Maybe there isn't. And maybe someone doesn't want to think about that reason right now. Maybe you're not at a point of wanting to define that reason. And lastly, I know how you feel. Do you? Do you really know what I'm feeling right now? Do you know my experiences? Do you know what I've been through? You don't. Okay, so if I can't say these things, then Sarah, what can I say? Here are some things that we would encourage you to say. Oh, and that text is not showing up correctly on the screen. Sorry about that. Here are some things that you can say. I'm sorry for your loss, and I'm here to listen. You're meeting the person where they are at and letting them know that if they want to reach out, you are here for them to just listen. My deepest condolences. It is okay to feel this way. I wish I had the right words. Just know I care. Again, you're showing that empathy and that you're there for them. And I can't imagine what you are going through right now. All of these things that you can say reflect empathy and active listening. So rather than telling the person how they should feel, you are just acknowledging where they're, they are at and showing a sense of care. And lastly, what does grief look like? I know we touched upon it briefly with the stages of grief, or as we know, they're not stages. But essentially the signs of grief that maybe you're experiencing these is first, you may be experiencing a range of feelings. So you could be sad, then angry, then again the bargaining, maybe irritable, maybe more irritable than usual. You could be having thoughts of disbelief and confusion. Recall me thinking, I can't believe I've been home since March. I, it's so hard to wrap my mind around. And then my mind and my thoughts look like all those tangled arrows. And there could be some physical and behavioral changes. So perhaps you've had a change in appetite. I know, oof, I have certainly been stress eating. I've got a bag of Hershey chocolate in my kitchen right now. Yeah, that's stress and some grief and loss as well. There could also be sleep changes. Um, if you are prone to headaches due to stress, maybe you could be having that more. Maybe you could be feeling a little bit more sluggish because you're feeling a little bit more down. What's important is for you to recognize what are your signs of grief that are telling you, hey, maybe I should take some time to focus on some of these signs and implement some strategies. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Julie, who's going to talk about some ways that you can help cope with some of these feelings and experiences. Hi, everyone. So my name is Julie, as Sarah stated. So I'm going to go over some strategies you can practice for coping with disappointment and grief and loss. So the first one is going to be acceptance. So when I say acceptance, we mean accepting things how they are. There's some power in acceptance because oh, that's where you can try to find a control. Because right now, how the world feels totally uncontrollable and uncertain. So try to focus on things you can control. So an example of this. If I choose to go outside and go to a grocery store or a restaurant or something like that, I may not be able to, to be in control of the rules at the restaurant or store, but I can wash my hands, I can wear a mask, and practice social distancing. And, and also, in terms of school, 
even though I, I can't physically go into school and my internship, it, it can't be in person, I can still learn and go to school virtually and I can still see clients on telehealth on Zoom. So even though it's not the same, it's trying to find comfort in acceptance. So try and let go of things you can't control. And so you can't control the rules of others or others to themselves, but you can control yourself. The next strategy is going to be to remind yourself that this is temporary. So when I say that for myself, it's kind of hard to say because I struggle with this as well because yeah it's temporary but now the pandemic it feels like it's never ending it it all began in march here in the united states and i think that's seven months ago at this point so who's counting <laughs> so it's easy to kind of remind myself of like how long have i been working from home how long have i been doing online school it's really hard to comprehend but at the end of the day it's important to remind yourself of how temporary it is. Do we know what that time is? No, but it is temporary. And we can see this because our pandemics have happened before and people have overcome it. And next is to find your own meaning. So what have you gained from this experience? In quarantine, I've seen from my own peers or people who have, have picked up hobbies or have had goals to lose weight or to read a certain amount of books. So ask yourself, or what new things have you learned? Or have you discovered things about yourself? And maybe in the beginning, you didn't even know that you could make it this far. And now here we are, seven, eight months later, and you're still thriving. The next strategy is to manage your thoughts. And by this, I mean anxiety, harassing mind, always thinking of the worst, and unhealthy anticipatory grief. So the first strategy is to find balance or with or reframing. And this is because your mind is trying to protect you by thinking of and preparing for the worst case scenarios. But in reality, this type of thinking is going to hurt you. It's creating an unnecessary amount of stress and anxiety. So don't try to fight your mind when this occurs. Try to find the balance. If you think of the negative and then think of a positive. So for example, we all get a little sick and the world goes on and not everyone dies because we're taking the necessary precautions and safety, me safety measures. And so rather than ignore the reality of what's going on, the negative thought. Acknowledge it and reframe it into something more positive. So the next one is to focus on the present. Be mindful. And so you can do this by using all five of your senses. So focusing on the moment of being president, president, see quarantine, what's happening to me? Being present and being mindful can help one to calm all the racing thoughts. So simply noticing how the environment around you by using all five of your senses can make all the difference. So right now in this room, notice all the sounds you hear, all the sights you see, the clothes on your skin. All these details can help you focus on where you're at or right here in the moment and not in the future because that is where your mind is probably taking you. So be here right now in the moment and right now in the moment you may realize i am okay the next one is compassion so practicing compassion can be very easy when you are thinking of it towards yourself or others but during these times it can be very pressing so be kind and patient to others and and uh, you may have to remind yourself to be a uh, nice to yourself. Remind yourself you are doing the best that you can in this moment. And the reality is, I'm sure that there are a lot of others who are, who are feeling the same way as you. Moving on to the next one. 
Name it and feel it. So if it is part of a human experience, it is mentionable. And if it's mentionable, well, then it's manageable. Grief and loss are human experiences, so it's manageable. And with that, well, there's power in saying how we feel. So when we feel the negative feelings or we have things happen to us or we lose someone, it's it can be kind of easy to keep it inside. Oh, but saying it out loud can help you feel the emotion. And we need the emotion for our emotions, how the physical act of saying it out loud. So acknowledge it and allow yourself to feel. And try not to should tell yourself because shooting yourself it is the idea of I should be doing better. I should stop thinking of this. I should, I should, I should. Be now in the moment and feel your feelings. And lastly, connect with others. So right now, I know that connecting can look a little bit different compared to seven, eight months ago, but there's still ways. So the first one is to talk to you, to your support systems. And by this, I can mean your friends, your family, to your significant other, except also it can be a trusted professor or a counselor or therapist or even a clergy or a person in the community. And next, ask for help. If you find that by your symptoms of, of experiencing grief and loss or anxiety or depression um, are really tampering with by your well-being, ask for help. And by this, it could be a counselor at NIU, or it could be in a private practice or agency. And also, you can ask to your friends and family and support systems for help during these. And lastly, connect with yourself. If you're trying to explore your feelings of disappointment, grief, and loss, write it down and reflect on it. Try to have your thoughts on a page and, and then you can try and reread it. And also meditate. Meditating is a great way to calm yourself down and really be present in the moment. So here are some resources at NIU. So we are student wellness and we have Mission for Wellness, and this is an article with various health topics that we send out. We also do presentations, and we're able to request them for your classroom, for your organization, etc. All you have to do is email us at the email bewell at niu.edu. Um, and counseling and consultation services, uh, this is something you have access to as an NIU student or employee. And they have therapists, psychiatrists, counselors, etc. And all these people are here to help. And there's health services, recreation and wellness, and NIU resource centers on campus. All right, so if you enjoyed our presentation today, or maybe you want to learn more about other type of self-care, topics, you can go ahead and find us here on Mondays at 4 p.m. So next week, we're going to be talking about connecting with others in the week. And then we have a week off because we are doing a, a Halloween, and that is a virtual four day Halloween themed event. And we'll have more information about that on NIU social media. And lastly, um, it would be very appreciated if you could complete our short survey. And this is just to let us know how we're doing and if you'd like to hear more from us. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. This wraps up our presentation. We're so glad that you all were able to join us today. If you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we would love to talk to you and answer your question. And we would really appreciate uh, you filling out the survey. Um, in the survey, you could give us suggestions or if there's any topics that you'd like to learn more about, you could put them in there as well. 
But thank you all so much, and we hope to see you next week. Thanks. <laughs>